welcome you in the lecture series of basics of communication engineering the objective of this lecture series is to introduce students with the theory and application of communication systems to provide the knowledge of analog and digital communication system this includes amplitude modulation frequency modulation phase modulation pulse code modulation techniques digital modulation and also the telephone systems and the prerequisites to this course are the probability and random variables and also the signals and system this course having six different uh, units in the first unit introduction to communication system we will discuss about evolution of communication system elements of communication system types of communication system and different applications in the second unit amplitude modulation we will discuss about equation of amplitude modulated signal modulation index and efficiency of amplitude modulating system generation and demodulation of amplitude modulated signals and different types of amplitude modulated receiver and in the third unit frequency modulation we will discuss about generalized concept of angle modulation frequency and phase modulation theory mathematical representation of frequency and phase modulated wave bandwidth of of frequency modulation narrow band and wide band frequency modulation and frequency modulation generation and also we will discuss about the demodulation of the frequency modulated signal in the fourth unit pulse modulation this is a digital communication part where we will discuss about sampling theorem pulse amplitude modulation pam pulse position modulation ppm pulse width modulation pwm quantization pulse code modulation pcm and also the time division multiplexing tdm and delta modulation in the fifth unit digital modulation in this section i would like to discuss about line coding different line coding techniques amplitude frequency phase shift king quadrature amplitude modulation constellation diagram and generation and reception of binary phase shift king and in the last unit telephony uh, we will discuss about the principles of telephony telephone transmitter and receiver necessity uh, for the telephone exchange and uh, in the course learning outcome uh, you will able to explain the principles of modulation and also you will able to describe and explain a number of analog modulation schemes and calculate bandwidth and power consumption of different schemes and also describe and explain a number of digital modulation techniques you will also able to apply the concept of sampling and tdm to uh, determine the data rate and bandwidth of the digital system and uh, also you will able to explain the principle of telephony the textbook and the reference books are listed here simon hecken communication system bp lati modern and digital communication and g kennedy electronics communication systems and b clark digital communication fundamentals and applications and t viswanathan telecommunication switching systems and networks and this is the uh, your evaluation criteria mst will be of uh, 25 marks est will be of uh, 35 marks and sessional will be of 40 marks and sessional will includes your assignments tutorial quiz lab evaluation etc now before uh, to start the series let me introduce myself i am pravindra kumar assistant professor in thapar institute of engineering and technology in electronics and communication engineering department i did my phd 
from Indian Institute of Technology in Optical Communication. My research interest area is quantum optical communication and Li-Fi technology. Now we'll start with the introduction to communication process. Today, communication enters our daily lives in so many different ways. Mobile at our hands, laptops and the radio and television in our rooms, the computer terminals with access to the internet in our office and homes. It is important to realize that the communication system and electric energy system have different sets of constraints. The electrical energy system uh, where the waveform are usually known and we design system for minimum energy loss. But in communication system, the waveform present at the receiver is unknown until after it is received. So this is basic different difference between electrical and communication system. Now modes of communication. A communication system conveys information from its source to destination some distance away. There are two basic modes of communication. First is broadcasting which involves use of a single powerful transmitter and numbers of receiver that are relatively inexpensive to build. Here the information bearing signal follow only one direction that is FM radio TV broadcasting. So here the signal is flowing only in one direction and, and as you can see in this figure there is one transmitter this is one transmitter and this is base station and the, there is only in one direction flow and there are number of uh, users includes here and other uh, other mode of communication may be the point to point communication in which communication process take place over a link between single transmitter and a receiver. In this case, there is usually bi-directional flow of information whereas in broadcasting, you can see in broadcasting there is a signal flow in only in one direction but in a point to point communication, signal will flow in both the direction and it is basically known as uh, your full duplex uh, technique and uh, like telephone link between earth station and uh, and a robot navigating uh, the surface of the distinct planet etc. So these are different point to point communication system and now we are coming to the types of communication system. Communication, uh, communication systems can be broadly divided into uh, two types. Analog communication system. Uh, in the analog communication system the information to be transmitted is in the form of an analog signal that is a continuous time waveform and in digital communication system, the information to be transmitted is in digital form. But here, even though the message is in digital form, the transmitter sig the transmitted signal may still be an analog waveform as we may use a sinusoidal for one frequency to represent a binary signal 1 and sinusoidal signal of different frequency to represent uh, uh, that binary 0. Uh, message signal. So here you can see one is uh, represented by free, uh, by the analog signal uh, with the frequency one and zero is represented by analog signal with the frequency f naught. So even though the transmitted signal here is uh, in digital form, uh, the, the signal which we, uh, we want to transmit, but the transmitted signal here is basically analog signal and the message signal feed to the transmitter basically may be in digital form either because the source has produced it in that form or an analog waveform produced by the information source. So uh, at the source end, the, the information may be digital or you can say in the analog form. 
and but in the transmitting end it uh, also it may be in the analog and digital form so these are two types of uh, communication system now we will discuss about frequency allocation as i told you communication is the transmission of information bearing waveforms over different types of communication channels like free space uh, cables wires optical fiber etc in communication system that use the atmosphere for the transmission channel interference and the propagation conditions are strongly dependent on the transmission frequency theoretically any type of uh, modulation for example amplitude modulation frequency modulation phase modulation uh, and phase shift king frequency shift king etc can be used at any uh, transmission frequency however to provide some imbalance of order government regulations specify the modulation type the bandwidth and type of information that can be transmitted over designated frequency band on international basis frequency assignments and technical standards are set by international telecommunication union itu an specified agency of the united nation and also federal communication commission fcc of united states regulates and licenses a frequency band for the general public in addition the national telecommunication and information administration NTIA is responsible for US government and US military frequency assignment in India the department of telecommunications DOT conducts auctions for license for elect electromagnetic spectrum now we will discuss uh, more about the frequency band and frequency allocation here Uh, this table in this table you can see uh, the frequency band propagation characteristic and uh, uses of that frequency band first of all the frequency band 3 to 30 kilohertz or you can say in the form of wavelength it is 100 to 10 kilometer in the wavelength and this band is basically known as very low frequency vlf vlf band and the propagation characteristic are here it is ground wave low attenuation day and night and has high atmospheric level and the use uh, of uh, this typical uh, the typical use of uh, this band is long range navigation submarine communication and also you can see we can convert the frequency into wavelength lambda using this formula lambda is equal to c by f where c is the speed of light and f is the frequency which uh, you are using and you want to convert in the wavelength and uh, another band is 30 to 300 kilohertz and uh, in the wavelength uh, we can say 10 kilometer to 1 kilometer and this band is known as low frequency band lf band and it is very in uh, propagation characteristic it is very similar to vhf slightly less reliable absorption in daytime in the atmosphere and this is used in long range uh, long range navigation and marine communication and another band is 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz or in wavelength you can say 1 kilometer to 100 meter and this band is known as medium frequency band mf band and the ground wave here and sky wave attenuation is low at night and high in day in atmosphere and atmospheric noise is uh, present here and also uh, the uh, the use of this uh, the uh, use of uh, this band is in direction finding am broadcasting another band is 3 to 30 megahertz 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz and even in wavelength you can say 100 meter to 10 meter and it is basically known as high frequency band and in the property the ionospheric reflection varies uh, with the time of day and season and frequency uh, low atmospheric noise uh, basically at uh, Uh, 30 megahertz so uh, they are depend on the season and the uh, time of the day uh, ionospheric reflection uh, will vary when the these waves propagate uh, through the atmosphere and in the use you can say 
is used international broadcasting military communication long distance aircraft and ship communication telephone telegraph fax emails etc and another band is 330 to 300 megahertz and uh, in wavelength you can say 10 meter to 1 meter and this band is known as very high frequency band vhf and in the characteristic you can say it is nearly it requires nearly a line of sight los propagation and uh, there is uh, scattering involved in the in the in this band and this is used vhf tv fm am aircraft communication aircraft navigational aids and uh, the another band is 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and in wavelength you can say 1 meter to 10 cm and this band is basically known as ultra high frequency band uhf and this also require line of sight propagation and uh, there is uh, cosmic noise available in this uh, uh, characteristic and this is used in uhf tv cellular telephone navigational aids radar microwave links personal communication system now another band is 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz or in wavelength you can say 10 cm to 1 cm and this band is basically known as super high frequency shf and in the characteristic you can say it also required the line of sight propagation rainfall attenuation is uh, here at uh, about 10 gigahertz atmospheric attenuation and high water Uh, vapor ab uh, absorption are at uh, 22.2 gigahertz and it is used in satellite communication radar and microwave link in satellite communication you can say in c band uh, is from 4 to 8 gigahertz uh, q band uh, 12 to 18 gigahertz k band uh, 18 to 27 gigahertz and ka band 27 to 40 gigahertz in satellite communication and another band is basically 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz or you can say in wavelength it is 1 cm to 1 mm and this band is known as extremely high frequency ehf band and it has high water vapor absorption at 183 gigahertz and oxygen absorption at 60 and 119 gigahertz and it is basically used in millimeter waves communication satellite radar communication and another band is your 179 terahertz to 238 terahertz or you can say in wavelength it is 1675 nanometer to 1260 nanometer and this band is known as infrared light region or uh, or you can say infrared frequency band and this uh, is basically required line of sight propagation and it is used in infrared light region for optical communication so this is basically infrared region where optical communication can be used in this band 1675 nanometer to 1260 nanometer another band is 384 terahertz to 789 terahertz or in wavelength you can say 780 nanometer to 380 nanometer and this is visible light region or visible band and this also require line of sight or light of sight propagation and this is used in visible optical Uh, communication and uh, li-fi communication so these are the some uh, frequency band and uh, which agencies are uh, uh, provide the license and also here uh, there are some uh, conversion 1 kilohertz basically it is equal to 10 is to the power 3 hertz 1 megahertz it is equal to 10 is to the power 6 hertz 1 gigahertz Uh, it is equal to 10 is to the power 9 hertz 
and 1 terahertz it is equal to 10 is to the power 12 hertz so uh, this uh, this this is the conversion from uh, different uh, kilohertz megahertz gigahertz terahertz to uh, hertz in frequency and uh, this was lecture first of the lecture series of basics of communication engineering and here we have discussed the introductory part of the communication in the next lecture uh, i would like to discuss about the elements of communication system so till then thanks for listening this lecture thank you